I'm Jason Jorgensen, and it is time for a springtime edition of our Husker Chat with Sean Callahan, the publisher of HuskerOnline.com. Sean, thanks a lot for joining us. I guess the biggest thing is you had a spring practice to call this year, and there will be a game on Saturday. Yeah, they made it all the way here, Jason. Practice 15. Um, hopefully, maybe 40,000 people will be in attendance in, in that area. Um, I know they were hoping to get a late push here. The the forecast, I mean, they're calling for up to 88 degrees, a windy day, but it's going to be a beautiful weekend in Lincoln. Husker baseball um, could have up to 6,100 fans now. You've got the Lincoln Marathon and obviously the red-white spring game. So um, this is the first big weekend we've seen in this town um, since COVID-19 hit. When you start to break down this spring, what do you think is maybe the the biggest thing that Scott Frost can take away from, from these practices? I mean, I'll, I just think getting the practices. I I go back to that. I mean, last year they didn't get a spring. They didn't have a traditional training camp. So you lose all that developmental time with your team. And um, I, I think just teaching your team, you know, how to practice and getting that repetition when there's not a game in front of you, it's so important. And that's really, I think, where the growth hopefully has come is getting five weeks in a row of this, getting some big scrimmages in there, and, and hopefully having it build your team and your roster. Now, going forward, of course, we've heard a lot of good things coming out of spring as you look at uh, things and, and kind of the landscape for Husker football. What's the biggest questions now for Scott Frost after the spring game? I think the biggest one is, do they have enough at quarterback after Martinez? And I, I don't know if they do. I mean, I think you're just ha- going to have to gamble that Martinez can stay healthy and be your guy right now. Because uh, I don't know if if there is a viable plan B to have a, a number two out there. I mean, it's going to have to be Logan Smothers or Matt Masker or Heinrich Harburg. And then the running back position is a really big one for me. Do they have a guy? I mean, right now there's nobody – um, that jumps out. I think Gabe Urban, the true freshman, has had a nice spring. Um, I think yet Jack West Yant has been a surprise guy. Um, but I, I still question that position if they have what I would consider a 1,000-yard level back. And I think to be a team that wins in the Big Ten Conference, you've got to have a 1,000-yard running back on your roster. Today on Husker Chat, we're joined by Sean Callahan as we preview Nebraska's spring game this weekend. Sean, I know you've talked about it a lot in your reports. It sounds like you're pretty impressed with what they've been able to come together now with this offensive line. Yeah, you look at the depth and the length and the athletic ability. I mean, they've got options and they've changed, you know, just going through constant coaching changes and other different things. The offensive line really fell for Nebraska. Um, really since about 2013, 14, and and it's just been a slow decline. And I finally feel like they've built this thing up where they've got a lot of competition, a lot of size, a lot of athletic ability. Um, This is as deep of a line as we've seen in a while. And you you start with the tackle position. I mean, they have three nationally top 100 ranked tackles now on the roster. They have never had one, um, you know, until the last couple of years. Um, so I, I think they've grown and developed the tackle position, what it needs to be. And I think they've got a lot of guys that can play the guard positions as well. A lot of hype the last couple of years about the receivers that have been brought in, but they haven't been able to produce all that much on the field. It sounds like maybe they also have that position fixed also. Yeah, the, I think Samari Torre has been a great addition uh, from Montana, former All-American. I think he's going to – maybe if I had to project, I think he's probably going to be their leading receiver this year. Uh, Omar Manning, um, we got to see some flashes of him, and he's looked apart physically, kind of what we thought. Xavier Betts, Oliver Martin. So I think they have depth, size, and options there too. And, you know, a year ago I think we thought they were going to be there, and it just didn't happen with Omar Manning. Marcus Fleming left. Will Nixon got hurt. Will Nixon's back now. He's had a really good spring, too. So I, I think the options are there. Xavier Betts, too. I think he's come a long way from year one to year two. So there's just better athletic ability and talent all around at that receiver position. And the black shirts. We've heard so much this offseason about a lot of guys could have moved on, could have gone to different places. They decided to come back. When this season starts, is that the strength of this team? Yeah, I think the top to bottom, you look at the Blackshirt defense, 17 of their top 20 players return in terms of snaps played. Then they add a very good transfer in Chris Kolarovic uh, from Northern Iowa, who 
I think is going to be a starter this year as a newcomer. Um, so just I think the, the the front seven and the depth they have, Feldarius Payne on the edge has made a big jump this spring. I love the D-line of Ty Robinson, Casey Robert, Rogers, Ben Stilley, Damian Daniels, Jordan Riley, um, on and on. I, I just think the front seven is solid. You have two six-year seniors at safety. Um, your best player maybe on the team is Cam Taylor Britt at corner. Um, so there's a lot there to like about this defense going into 21. Well, it should be a lot of fun. We look forward to seeing the game on Saturday. It, it almost seems like old times. Yeah, just, just to get the fans back. Think about this, Jason. The last time we were in Memorial Stadium, Keith Duncan, the Iowa kicker, was blowing kisses at Scott Frost, and that was November of 2019. I mean, that was a long time ago. Um, so, um, you know, just looking at it like that, it, I think just getting Husker Nation back in the stadium, spending a weekend together, it's going to be fun. All right, as always, we appreciate your insights. Hey, thank you. You bet. And that was Sean Callahan, the publisher of HuskerOnline.com. That will do it for our spring version of Husker Chat. I'm Jason Jorgensen.